Can chronic pain cause high blood pressure? The answer may surprise you. Hey, I'm Dr. Sam McDonald, brain health expert, helping you rewire your brain so you can live a better life. If you love this content, make sure to like and subscribe so you get the notifications for each week's new video. So there's really two forms of high blood pressure that can be diagnosed. There's primary and secondary. For the purpose of this video, we're gonna really focus on primary because over 90% of all high blood pressure cases are diagnosed as primary, which is also known as essential hypertension. Secondary is more associated with things like in-stage pathologies like kidney disease, uh, thyroid problems, tumors, those kind of things. So we're gonna focus on essential hypertension or primary hypertension. We're gonna be talking about the lifestyle associated problems that can cause it. So your obesity, your overweight problems, alcohol consumption, smoking, salt, all those are gonna have a contribution, but obviously chronic pain is one of the biggest drivers that can cause hypertension. So when I say the word pain, I want you to equate that to stress. So our nervous system has many different functions, but one of the most important is to adapt to stress on a daily basis, both internal stress and external stress to keep us alive. So stress can come in many different forms. It can be physical stress, whether that's poor biomechanics and how you're holding your body and moving around, that's an increased stress for your body to function. It can be things like degeneration. It can be things you're putting into your body if you're eating a poor diet or if you're smoking or increases in alcohol consumption. It can also be emotional stress. So things like problems with relationships, financial stress, job stress, all those different types of stressors are going to increase the amount of work the nervous system is gonna to have to do. And our nervous system only has a certain level of adaptability. So every time you add in one of these stressors, whether it's poor biomechanics, whether it's a poor diet, whether it's poor emotional stress, relationships, those kind of things, all of this is going to increase the demand of work that the nervous system needs to maintain its level of peace and level of function. And once you cross this threshold over the adaptability of that nervous system, that's when we go into survival mode, AKA the sympathetic part of the nervous system. This is your fight or flight part of the nervous system. Now, when this happens, this becomes a downward spiral of function. I'm going to explain why. So when we go into this fight or flight function, we have an increase in our heart rate. Why? Because our nervous system is now detecting a threat. It's detecting danger and it wants to either fight that threat or it wants to escape and run away. So it's gonna increase the heart rate. Now, as a byproduct of increasing the heart rate, it's also going to start to utilize other resources and it's going to increase and change the hormonal cascade. So now you're gonna to start to get a difference in hormones being produced in the body. Things like epinephrine, adrenaline, cortisol, are now gonna to start to be coursing through the bloodstream instead of other different types of hormones, which is going to now keep pushing this stress response even more. When that starts to happen, now you get a constriction of the smooth muscle around all the different blood vessels, thus narrowing them, which is then going to cause that increase in blood pressure. Because think of this just, ba just like basic plumbing. The smaller the tube or the smaller the pipe, the increase in the pressure. So this is all a side effect of the function of the nervous system being in a survival state. So heart rate goes up, tubes get smaller, blood pressure increases because the heart's trying to then push resources around the body because again, the body's trying to say, hey, there's a danger, we need to escape and we need to get out of here. Now this is all okay in the short term, meaning that if this is a situation that's lasting an hour, a couple hours, or even a day, the problem is when this starts to become a chronic issue if you have the chronic pain that's continuing to activate this stress response because the nervous system is adaptable and it learns and it changes. So as you enter into this fight or flight state more often, the nervous system is going to start to wire itself to be able to trigger this fight or flight system easier. So the part of the brain that's associated with that is what's called the limbic system. That's going to start to grow in size. It's actually going to start to get preferential blood flow as blood moves up to the brain. And this part of the brain up here called your frontal lobes is actually going to start to shrink. And when that happens, now you have an easier trigger for this whole fight or flight system. Think of like an easier trigger for that fire alarm to go off, thus perpetuating the cycle again and again and again. And you're gonna start to notice other changes in your lifestyle too. Things like poor sleep quality, digestive problems, cold hands, 
focus and attention issues. And even worse of all is a decrease in pain sensitivity, meaning you can actually feel pain easier. Thus, this whole cycle just continues to spiral downward and downward and downward. Now, what can you do about addressing and stopping this whole issue? Well, you need to address two things. We need to find what is the cause of this chronic pain issue. So whether it's biomechanical in nature or neurological in nature, it needs to be addressed because this is gonna to continue to push your system into that survival state. Thus, as I said, this whole cycle is gonna continue forever and ever and ever, as well as we need to address these underlying neurological problems because the nervous system has now learned to be in this chronic fight or flight state. It needs to unlearn that and relearn how to get back into balance, meaning how to get back into a parasympathetic, healing, healthy, restful state. The other lifestyle factors that will come with that are exponential in their impact once these two are addressed. So starting to get yourself into a healthy routine, meaning like losing weight, avoiding alcohol consumption, stopping smoking, watching your diet and watching what you're putting into your body. All those are going to increase the momentum of your healing, but those are all ancillary things. They go after addressing the chronic pain issue and the neurological dysfunction. You have to have both if you're looking for as full of a recovery as possible. So on that note, you should be healthy by choice, not by chance. And for that reason, I will see you on the next video.